Welcome back to Life With Us TV. It's your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, y'all don't book y'all first carnival cruise. You don't know what to do. You're confused. Listen, in this video, we're going to give you the 21 crucial tips that we have that's going to allow you to get through your cruise with ease, making minimal mistakes so you don't have no surprises at the end. Are y'all ready for this kind of information that we're about to be teaching? Let's get into it. Crucial tip number one as a first time carnival cruiser, make sure you bring enough cash. Yes. What does that mean? I'm not talking about just having cash to spend willy nilly. I'm talking about cash and in little increments. Those are for tips, tipping your porter, and then to also have access to some emergency funds on hand while you're cruising. Our rule of thumb is after we've pre-purchased everything that we've needed, go ahead and just take $500. Have it available. If you use it, you use it. If you don't, bring it back home and deposit exactly. it back into your bank. Crucial tip number two for the first time countable cruiser. Do not use your debit card in port. Reason being, you open yourself up to possible fraud. If your card gets double charged for some reason, you know it is very hard to dispute a double charge on a debit card. So that's why we recommend always spending cash in port or using your credit card, because on a credit card, they are so much easier to, to dispute charges. Absolutely. <laughs> and what is in port? Port means the destination that you are sailing to. For right. instance, if your ports of call are NASA and Freeport, that's what in port means. You're actually in port in those destinations. Yes. Crucial tip number three is what to put in your carry-on bag. We did an extensive video about that. We'll have that link below. But what I want to hit on is those things not to bring through the security checkpoint yes. once you're trying to get on board the ship. Don't show up with an open bottle of water thinking that you're just going to be able to tell them, oh, I'm drinking on this. No, they're going mm -hmm. to toss it. If you're drinking on a Coca-Cola Sprite, whatever your beverage choice is, they're going to throw it away. Right. Make sure that you, you chug it, chug it if you can. I know Sprite going to hit you right now. <laughs> but go ahead and get rid of it because they're going to toss it out. Make sure that you're not trying to show up with some of the prohibited things as is bottles. They do not allow any kind of bottles because they think people are trying to smuggle in alcohol. Make sure that if you're bringing your wine, it's the right size. It's the 750 milliliter bottle. Right. Not that big one. Yeah. Not the <laughs> box. Not that liter, man. <laughs> if you're bringing sodas. No bottles. You can only bring canned sodas or if yes. you want to bring some kind of other kind of beverage, they will allow you to bring cartons. Don't show up with an open thing of Doritos. They're going to be like, ah, ah, ah. Don't bring your, your cousin's baked brownies. Ah, ah, ah. They're going to think that you got some weed brownies in there. We're not going to, they're not fitting to let you on. But you can bring pre-packaged snacks, right. Lay's, <clears throat> potato chips, all that. You just have to be unopened. You're and not pre-packaged edibles either. I want to clarify that. what we're that. talking about. Not pre-packaged edibles. Because you might, I'm, I'm going to go to the dispensary <laughs> and get some pre-packaged edibles. I can bring those on. No. Oh, you're going to bring them on, but you're going to get walked off. <laughs> right. Bad boys, what you going to do? Yeah. They're coming for you. Crucial tip number four for the first time countable cruisers. Don't purchase the Cheers package if you don't have to. Right. Now, this is a good rule of thumb to know if the Cheers package is for you or not. If you are not a heavy drinker, it is not for you. It's not worth it. Not for you. But if you are a heavy drinker, you go out on Fridays, Saturdays, or whenever you go out to the bar and you're doing shot after shot, drink after, after drink. drink, you leave your bill is like two, three, four hundred dollars, whatever. It's you know it's for you because the average drink on Carnival most time is about $13. Mm -hmm. So you do the math. You do six drinks, that's almost $80 right there. So don't buy the Cheers package if you don't have to. Now, this is something that people also say, well, you know, it isn't just for alcoholic beverages. It's for milkshakes, specialty coffees, monster drinks, bottled water, all of that. Right. So if those things combined with being able to drink uh, upward of 15 drinks per day right. per person is worth the hefty price tag to you, 
then by all means go ahead and do so. Right. But if you're like my husband say, you know if you are a true drinker or not and whether or not that package is going to be beneficial for you, then do it or don't do it. It's, right. it's one of those things. It has to be worth it to you. Crucial tip number five for the first time Carnival Cruiser. Do as I say and not as I do. If you look at some of our videos, you probably be like, they don't even do that themselves, like I said. <laughs> Listen to the teacher and don't do what the teacher does. Come into port a day early. If you live right. in Virginia and your cruise ship leaves from out of Miami, go ahead and fly into Miami a day before. You can even catch the red eye so that you can go ahead and just be there. It gives you that little bit of extra time. It takes a lot of stress, stress off of right. you. And it just gives you a time to unwind. Maybe you want to get you a nice good breakfast in the morning in the city that you're going to be leaving out of. It gives you an opportunity for mistakes to be made. Like Someone delayed, like us, delayed yeah, flight, delayed flights. flights and stuff like, yeah. um, if you're driving and you just say, well, we're going to drive straight in and arrive the morning of our cruise, anything could happen. Yeah, it could be an accident on the interstate yeah. and block Flat traffic tires. for hours. Yeah. Matter of fact, on one of our cruises, uh, couple came up to us that watched the channel and it was like yeah. we was coming in on our first cruise we had a new vehicle and guess what the new vehicle broke down while we was on the way to port yeah had an axle problem or something yeah and so they had to end up somebody had to come tow them get them a new car and they still made it on the trip i was like y'all are y'all y'all are dope because i probably turned tried. around and went home <laughs> and they did everything right so right that gave them an opportunity to correct right what was happening so you would never think that a brand new car would have broke down on you. No. Yeah. So that's why I said do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> we don't be having the luxury to do that. You know, I'm a caregiver over here. Yeah. I got to leave when, they, when the relief comes. Crucial tip number six for the first time Carnival Cruiser. We highly yes. recommend that you, <laughs> that you join the Facebook group for your sailing. Mm -hmm. Because at this point, you can begin to meet people before you get on board. You guys can talk about different games you can play. You can do bar crawls. I mean, Get it's endless on the things that you guys can do on board because you met each other in the Facebook group. And if you want to know how to look up your Facebook group, it's as simple as this. Get onto your Facebook, log in. If you don't have a Facebook, I'm sorry, this just ain't for you. Right. <laughs> I've heard people, I don't have a Facebook. You gotta go where the fun is. Right. <laughs> so go ahead and for instance, if you're on the Carnival Horizon, November the 16th, 2022, type in Carnival Horizon, November 16th, 2022. Yep. A group for your sailing should pop up. But if it's early on, like you looking for something for 2024, it may not exist yet. Right. You can create that you group. You can create it, yes. And then, just like you're looking for the group, people will <clears> look <throat> for your group and they'll just start to join in. And before you know it, you're probably like a good 800 people strong. Yep. Just having a good time. Yep. And you never know, you'll meet people that you will have lasting relationships with. I have people that we legit have cruised on every sailing together. And it's because we met in a Facebook group. Yep crazy. Crucial tip number seven. This is kind of a new one, but it also goes with you knowing what is included, what your limitations are, or is it just one of those things where it's a free for all? In this case, Carnival has just implemented a, after your second entree, <laughs> they're going to start charging you $5 yep. per entree in the main dining room. Yep. So that's when I say like, know <laughs> your limitations and ask questions if you're unsure. So if you're going somewhere, you'd be like, you know, is this an upcharge or is this unlimited dining? Like if you're in a C-Day brunch, you'd be like, can I get as many portion sizes as I want to? Just ask. But in the dining room for right now, you can pick up to two entrees. They will not charge you anything extra, but that third one, they're going to be bringing you that little thing and be oh, like, sign $5, here. $5, man. Sign $5. Here. Said yep. those alligator bites, $5. <laughs> yeah. That steak, $5. Crucial tip number eight for the first time Carnival Cruiser, don't double tip at the bar if you don't want to. But a lot of first timers don't know it because you, you're just so used to when you go to the bar in your local area, you get to drink. You give them a tip. Yeah. It's most time it's not included. Not in a lot of restaurants. Some restaurants right. it is, but not a lot of them. So on Carnival, it's already included. 
So we say only give extra tip if you, if, really want to. if you want to or they are really taking care of you. Or if you want them to constantly keep coming and serving you, tip. Crucial tip number nine. This may be a little lengthy, but we're going to get into it. The sale and sign card. Yeah. I know that if you're on this video, you probably have no idea what this card is. Why do I need it? Do I need it? And I'm gonna explain what it is, what you can do with it, and how you fund it. When you get on board a Carnival cruise ship, everything becomes cashless the moment yes. that you step on board. So you're going to have a card that's going to be in your mailbox outside of your cabin. That card is your lifeline to everything yep. on board. It's your key card to your room. It's your access card back onto the ship once you leave the ship to go into your destinations. And it's also your charge card to purchase anything that you want to purchase on board as well. It's pretty much like when they say, we have big brother over us and checking <laughs> on us. It's the big brother on the ship. It's going to make sure that anything that you want or have access to, is on that card. So what it is, is that two weeks before your actual sale day, you will get an invitation from Carnival Cruise Line to do your check-in process. Check-in process entails a few things, but along with that, you will be able to say whether or not you want to fund your sale and sign card via cash. Yep. You will have to hold on to your cash, bring that on board with you, do that at guest services, or in one of the kiosks and that that money will load on to your card so you yes. can start to spend it that way. Or from the comfort of your home or your computer or your phone, go ahead and guarantee that card with a credit card or debit card, preferably a credit card yes. because they will authorize multiple holds on that card starting yes. before you even get on the ship right. to make sure that card is in good standings and there's enough money on it right. to <laughs> go with the charges you're going to put on it. That's what that sale and sign card is. Make sure every night you're at least taking a look at that card on your TV or on your Carnival Hub app yes. to see the charges that you are spending. Yeah. It can get away from you very, very easily. Quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Before you know it, you're yeah. like, I know I didn't spend two hundred dollars right <laughs> because it's easy. It's like using a, a credit card with an invisible amount until you have to sell it up. Right. <laughs> now here's probably some useless facts to you, but they did a scientific experience to see what happens in our brain when we spend cash or we swipe a card. When we swipe a card, there's no zero brain activity. activity. But when you spend cash, mm -hmm. oh, it lights up. Uh -huh. So basically, that's what we're saying. Like, when you swiping that card, it's like, boom, I'm gonna get that, I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna get that, and then your bill is high as hell. Are there other creative ways to fund your sale and sign card? Absolutely. Gift cards, cruise cash, cash. things like that. But to make things simple for the first time cruiser, let's just stick with the cash or debit or credit card yes. to fund your sign and sell card. And it is your lifeline to all things on board. Just think of it as your work bag. Most time you can't even get in your building. Right, if you ain't got If you ain't got Think right. about it like that. All right, fam, if you're enjoying this video, go ahead and smash that like button so the algorithm can send this video to other first time cruisers so that their cruise can be a success just like yours. Just like yours. Crucial tip number 10 for the first time Carnival Cruiser. Gotta hit you. When, before you get on board, please put your cell phone in airplane mode because we've had countless people come to the channel mm. and be like, I wish I had did what y'all told <laughs> us because I ended up getting a 200, 300, 400. The highest one was $600 in roaming fees on their phone because they forgot to put their phone on airplane mode before they got on board or before they set sail. Yeah. So you don't want to get, so I say do it before because once you get on board and you start getting drink, having fun, sail away, partying, you, you will forget. forget. Before you know it, it's eight o'clock at night and you've got four, five hours of you just roaming. Right. So yeah, we ain't trying for you to pay for another cruise through your cell phone <laughs> because you forgot to do that. Yeah. 
And another thing, putting your phone in airplane mode does not affect its ability to connect to the internet if you bought that package or to use the Carnival Hub app. I get right. that question a lot. Yep. It does not affect that at all. Crucial tip number 11, if you're a person like me who loves to know that once you are on vacation, you can just settle into being on vacation and you don't have to worry about additional spending if you really don't have to. Right. The way to do that is create your own all-inclusive experience by pre-purchasing everything that yes. you think that you would need on board. If you're a bottled water drinker, make sure you pre-purchase the bottled waters on board. It'll be in your room when you get into your cabin. Make sure you pre-purchase your Wi-Fi packages. If you want to participate in specialty dining, go ahead and set up those reservations. Prepay for that. Buy a picture package. If you know that you like right. to flick it up, look good, take those family photos. That way, afterwards, you don't have to worry about an additional settling up that you will have to do. All right, and also I want to add to that excursion. And excursions because they those bad boys book up quick, especially the especially the most popular ones like the dolphin excursions, the ATVs. They book up very quick, so you definitely want to pre-purchase those as soon as you see that they're available. Crucial tip number twelve for the first time: Do you need a shield, man? You need a shield because we <laughs> highly recommend pre-purchasing your gratuity because if you don't. They're going to be charged at the end of the sailing. Anyway. Yes. But at the end of the sailing, they're going to be more expensive than they are if you pre-do them before you set sail. Now, the reason why we recommend doing prepaid gratuities is because it takes care of those people that are behind the scenes, that are helping the people that you actually see on board mm -hmm. to make sure that your cruise experience is perfect. And those people work hard. They work hard. They work very hard. Please do the prepaid gratuity. Now with us. Oh, go ahead. Now with us. We do prepaid gratuities and we tip. Give extra. That would be my <laughs> suggestion because I really still feel like the gratuities are low yeah. um, for the service that you're getting, but at least do the prepaid gratuities in our opinion. Do you have an opportunity to take those off at the end if you want to? That is definitely your choice to right. do so. You do have to go to guest services and do that and take it off and you can tip those people that you only have encountered. That's your prerogative. I don't personally like it, but I can't tell you what, what to you do. do. Crucial tip number 13. It's a question that I get a lot. Yup. <laughs> Lynette, I'm not a dress up kind of person. I don't like to do that foo foo stuff. Listen, this is what I tell people. <laughs> you may not participate, but the show is gonna go on. They're gonna go on. And that is a sailing up to five days. You're going to have at least one elegant night. Anything after six, you will have two elegant nights. Yep. I suggest as a first time carnival cruiser, you at least do it once. Yes. I'm not saying that you have to get in a ball gown. You have to put on a tuxedo. You have to do all that. But I will say, like, make yourself look a little nicer than you would if you just got off work and just hit the local bar, that local restaurant, Applebee's yeah. or restaurant around your hometown. Right. Like, really put yourself in the mode of getting into the cruise culture by doing something like that. I'm not saying you have to do it every cruise, but at least try it. It's fun to yeah, get dressed up, yep. flick it up, take the nice little pictures. You know, they're kind of like cliche, but it's an experience. Yeah. And you paid for this experience. Right. So go ahead and indulge. So you might as well go and take the opportunity well. to be sexy, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you are sexy, aren't you? Huh? Leave that down in the comments. <laughs> y'all better say y'all sexy because if don't nobody else think you're sexy, you better think. Right. It. Crucial tip number 14 for the first time Carnival Cruiser. You need to really pay attention to what's not included in your cruise fare. Right. But to ease your mind, a lot is included is. in the price that you're going to pay. But just to give you um, several examples of what's not included, as far as Spell City Dining mm -hmm. is not included, Wi-Fi packages, water, sodas, excursions, and the list goes on. But Carnival lists everything on there where it's an extensive list. We also got one on our website as too. If you go on our website, www.cofundtravel.com, and we have first time cruisers, frequently asked questions, you click there, we do have a long list of everything that's not included. Then we have one where everything that is included, just in case you can't find it on the Carnival website. 
And if you don't like to read, just hire you a travel agent like myself, and I'll tell it to you. Right. <laughs> Number 15 on the crucial carnival cruiser tip list is, what time do I check in? I get this question more than not, and it always happens around that four week mark yeah, <laughs> before yeah. your uh -huh. cruise. And it's usually a week before my notification goes out to let you know that in a week, you'll be able to check in for your time slot on your Carnival Cruise. You will have an opportunity to check into your Carnival Cruise via an online check-in process and select the best check-in time for you. I will tell you this, the earlier you can get online when those slots are open, the better opportunity it is for you to get the slot that you need. For instance, because we travel in groups when we usually do um, cruises, I tell all of my people, don't go to sleep tonight. Right. Like be online at midnight so that we all can get the same time slot or close by it. Right. So that we can all be able to check in together. Nobody has to wait out and wait for their time to come in to go ahead and go through the line. But right. yes, <clears throat> two weeks before, you will have an opportunity to check in and then select the time that you can arrive to get on your Carnival Cruise ship. Right, and we get this question too, what if I show up before my time, will they let me in? No. No, not really. Nah, if you show up early, no. Nah. They're gonna make you wait. They're gonna make you wait. Which is a good thing because yeah. it, it helps the check-in go crowd a lot. Crowd control. Yeah, they do it for crowd control. Your check-in time is 11 and you try to show up at nine, you got to wait for two hours. There are some cruise ports that are more strict than others. Right. In Miami, we couldn't even wait Mm -mm. Like we had to go across the street and stand there until it was time. The cops wouldn't even let us be in near the line. We had to go across the street. Crucial tip number 16 for the first time Carnival Cruiser. We get this, should I get the Wi-Fi pack? If you want to get on the if internet. If you want to get, <laughs> yes. If you want to get on the internet, yes. And then we get the question on which package should I get? Because there are three different packages. They got the lower package, which is your social package. The middle package is which is your value. Then the highest package is your premium package. The one that we recommend that will basically cover you if you're not trying to stream will be the value package, which is the middle one. Mm -hmm. Don't think that the Wi-Fi is gonna be like the Wi-Fi at, your, at house. your house. It's not. On our last cruise, when we was in Norfolk at port, oh, it was fine. It was moving we like, okay, okay, nice, nice. But the further we got out and see, it was almost non-existent. We talking about like taking like five minutes just to get on Google. And you know, Google is just like this. <laughs> mm -hmm. My MacBook wouldn't even connect at all. So yeah, so we recommend the middle package if you want to participate and be online, but just know that it's not gonna be like at home. But if you want an opportunity to get online at all, it's not like they yeah. give you 10 minutes a day for free or nothing like nah. that, nothing. <clears throat> if you need to get on it at all, Right. You need some kind of package. Yeah. Unless you want to buy it on board per day, and that's expensive. Very expensive. Crucial tip number 17. I have had this even with some of my clients, that if you are on board and you take pictures, and for instance, they have the photo gallery pixels where you're able to purchase your pictures directly from the Carnival Hub app, make sure you download those yes. pictures. Yes. Once you get off of that cruise ship, the opportunity for you to download those pictures go away because yep. that hub app is only available while you're sailing on a Carnival cruise ship. I've had people be like, Lynette, I forgot to download my pictures. The pictures I purchased, I don't have them. Like, I don't have my pictures. Can I fight and try to find the pictures and try to get them to email them too? Yes, it's a lengthy yes. back and forth yes. process. And I have successfully been able to do it twice, but it is not fun and it is not quick. Right. Because like last one took them a couple of months. It took a couple of months. To get it. For yeah. them to locate the digital pictures, ask me, is this it? <clears throat> Match it up with the folio and be able to send it. Right. I wish they would allow that hub app to at least be alive for 72 hours. Or give you and, access to a certain portion yeah. of it afterwards for 72 hours. But it's dead. As soon as you step off that ship, it's dead. Right. But another tip, when you download them, please go to your photo gallery on your phone and make sure that they did download because yes. I've had instances where I've downloaded them, go into my photos mm -hmm. and one or two be missing. So make sure that you do that too, to make sure that all of them are in your photo gallery. And as well as not only just the pictures, 
make sure if you are a person that wants to have your last tally of your spending account yes. on that last day, you can download that as well. But after you've gotten off that ship, it goes away. You can't yep. download it anymore. So make sure everything you need from that Carnival Hub app is downloaded before you step foot off of there. Crucial tip number 18 for the first time Carnival Cruiser. Mm -hmm. We highly recommend that you go ahead and get your VIFP number prior to you booking your first Carnival right. Cruise. Now, if you've already booked your cruise, no worries, you already got a VIP number. But what we're talking about now that if you have not booked, you get the VIP number first because what could end up happening is, is that you could get a first time cruisers deal. Now, this doesn't happen all the time. It doesn't, but it could happen. But it could happen. Or you can get a residence deal. So if right. you're in Florida or somewhere like that, right. you can get, oh, we have a Florida residence deal going on right now. We highly recommend you doing that first to at least give you an opportunity of possibilities of getting a deal. Yeah, go ahead, T.I. Yeah. <laughs> Crucial Carnival Cruiser tip number 19. This is actually a really good one. Yeah. And it's one that became a little tricky for even me because I thought I was maximizing my own personal benefit and I was not. This cruiser tip is this. If you are someone that has visited some land casinos, and if you are a frequent land casino person where you're at the MGM or Rosie's or anything like that, but you aren't an avid cruiser just yet, which means that you don't have no skin in the game when it comes to being on board and right. gambling, but you do have that credibility on land, go ahead and if you don't have a VIFP number, my husband just told you to get, go ahead and take that VIFP number and hit the link below and register that VIFP number into the Carnival Casinos Club. That way, they'll be able to see if you match up with any of the land perks, yeah. and they'll match them up with your at sea casino perks also have your cards for land available. So if you have your MGM Grand card, make sure you have it available so that you can upload a picture of it because they're going to verify how good of a gambler you are or how right. bad. Good <laughs> is really bad and bad is really good in the casino world, but they wanna know because they wanna be able to make sure that they have an opportunity for you to spend some money right. while you're on board and they wanna entice you to be able to do so. If you are already a VIFP member, you still may not be totally registered to receive your land perks to go right. along with right. your car. So put your VIFP number in. It may tell you it's already in there, but if you feel like the deals don't match the amount of gambling <laughs> that I do on land, call the number below and make sure that they can put in every perk in every match that you are possibly eligible for, and right. they can do that as well. For me, I'm not <clears> a gambler <throat> at all, but I have been to MGM yep. and Rosie's a few right. times. I put my number in, yes. and immediately I had a deal pop up for a fun match deal where I got free drinks in the casino. And I don't even play like that. Right. So I'm like, wow, I wasn't even maximizing my own benefit. So make sure you hit the link below if you don't have your VIFP, get one, register it. If you already have one, verify. If you don't think your deals are good enough, call right. that number and just to make sure. How you get it is on the Carnival's website. Carnival.com forward slash VIFP. Boom. Crucial tip number 20. Listen at me real good. <laughs> Download the Carnival Hub app now. right now. Now. Because you don't want to forget to do that like your boy did last year. And now the whole cruise, I'm having to use my wife's Carnival Hub app to see what activities is going on, see how much we spending or anything that, or menu <laughs> from the Carnival Hub app. So go ahead, whatever you're doing right now, stop, download it, and resume whatever activities you're doing. <laughs> Crucial tip number 21 for the first time Carnival Cruiser. If you don't listen to anything else, like listen to all of them, but this right here is important to me 
because I am an excursions person. I love to do different activities while we're in destination. Yes. If you see an excursion that you are interested in, don't sit on it. Right. Don't try to think it over. Don't ask your family and friends. Yeah. Don't wait until they get their paycheck on Friday to buy the mm -mm. excursion. Security excursion. Yes. Because if you're looking at that excursion, 2,000 other people are probably looking at that excursion as well. And right. they go like this. Yep. And they hardly ever re-up the inventory because they are vendor availability based. If your family or friends want to jump on board with you later, then, yeah. then just go ahead and let them do that later. And if you decide you change your mind, you want to do something else, then you can cancel what you already secured because right. they do allow that to happen without penalty. But don't think about it. You can't. Those excursions like ATVs, dolphins, Offense. encounters, and things like that, the popular ones, they go. Yep. They go quickly. quickly. Yep. Book the excursion. Yeah, because we had some of our clients that went through that where they were waiting on some of their friends and family to decide if they want to do this one excursion. And by the time they decide it, it's, it's gone. gone. Yeah. Or there's enough for two, three people and yeah. not the rest. rest of them, yeah. Well, you waited too late. And my hands are tied as a travel agent. I can't do anything about that. Right. It's availability. It's nothing I can do. Unless you want me to stand there and say, hello, my <laughs> name is Lynette. I'm your national tour guide. Yeah. I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> if you have enjoyed this video, you want to check out this video next. The 13 mistakes you want to avoid on your first carnival cruise. And we're going to catch you in the next video. Peace. Peace.